Evan Temple here with Warrior Poet Society and WPSN. Check it out behind us. We've got an actual live class with John. He's teaching all kinds of stuff that you'll be able to get to see on WPSN and download on the app. Not only that, we've got all kinds of gear you can get at sportsmansguide.com and use code WARPOET at checkout. You can get all the gear that they're using back there. John's curated a special spot just for you so you can check it out today. All right, welcome back, folks. Due to your request, popular demand, I'm doing an introduction to land navigation. Land navigation is extremely important, whether you're preparing for doomsday, whatever, and cell phone towers aren't working, or you're way out in the sticks where you're not going to get cell service and your handy-dandy GPS that's built into your phone is not tracking for you. To be able to have backup tools and equipment is a really big deal. Or if you're just doing some recreational hiking or you don't want to look like a tool in front of your wife who keeps saying, are you? lost and you're like, no, I'm not lost, but you're totally lost because you flaked and you didn't listen to any of that. Anyway, this is going to allow you to be better prepared for a myriad of different situations. Military, especially, man, you live or die according to land navigation. People think that the fight is all about guns. It is totally, totally not. Most of your mission success is going to be predicated on moving the pieces around a battlefield, being in the right place at the right time. Their shoot, move, communicate, and move and communicate are by far more important. If you're in the right place at the right time, you can maneuver into position unseen, and you're locking down those high speed avenues of approach, ingress, egress, and you are seeing that of a battle is won by terrain, then man, your strategy and your tactics are maximized, and therefore your skills don't have to be nearly as good. So being able to be a good protector, defender, uh, just general preparation, you have just got to know land nav. You just do. Phone is cool and you can also get lots of base maps built into this or little software you can download, which can be really cool, but this is not an out in the sticks kind of thing. Round and about urban areas, this can be good, but especially if you're cutting brush anywhere, you don't want to be caught with your pants down just looking at a phone. That's going to fail you. First and foremost, as we look into our introduction tools, is maps. Maps is a really big deal, so we'll start there. You can find maps all kinds of different places. I got these from National Geographic because a lot of times in my recreational time, I'm going to national parks. There are huge stretches of land where you can camp and hike the Appalachian Trail as well, which is in my neck of the woods. We're able to hop on the Appalachian and being able to track that on a map is a really big deal. And so whether you buy maps like this or you have an alternate plan, I love using Google Earth, and you can download that for free. Now you have the ability to go anywhere in the world, zoom into that thing, uh, you change the settings so you can be look at lat long or MGRS, whatever map format you're looking at, and now you can zoom in to a certain area up here, and let's go ahead and flip that around right. <laughs> Very good. Uh, right here I have my lat long coordinates, and there's my minutes, seconds. Here's all my different grids, and this has got really detailed terrain features with altitude and all my rivers and valleys, draws, spurs, all that good stuff. And if you don't know key terrain features and you don't know how to land nav, I'm going to say stuff in this video that probably is going to be a bit above your head. You're going to need to learn the skill of land navigation. The tools is just, hey, I need this to at least start the process. But first and foremost, you need maps. Google Earth is a tremendous resource to be able to zoom in, cut that thing, and now be able to look at your map. And down here they have little legends, so scales, and uh, incredible stuff so I can measure distance as well. Really love that. Once you have these maps, though, let me spill into some additional tools. I would recommend lamination. If you're going to get these outside, whether it's just dew in the air or it rains, this is going to turn into just soupy trash immediately. So as a rule, anytime I got paper in the field, I laminate just about everything. And so I got a laminator. You'll want to do that. Once you have a map laminated, there's another tool that you can get, and that is map markers. Anytime back in the day when I had my kit, you wouldn't find me without map markers on me and a map. And this allows me to be able to take my laminated map 
and I can draw with these markers all on the map and straight lines and uh, little notes and write down grids. Map markers are a big deal. Now, if you just go hit Amazon or wherever you're going to look for some of these land navigation devices, you're going to get the wrong thing. You're not going to get the cool thing. And you'll wish you'd listen to me, especially when it comes to this, which very few people know about. This is an eraser. And so this allows me to be able to write and then erase what I did so my map isn't burned forever. And again, the lamination allows me to be able to do that. That being said, links for all this stuff, everything that I show you today is going to be down below. That's going to help you get the right thing. And it's going to help me as well. So uh, use the links. Appreciate it. Anyway, enough about that. Map markers. These are great. And you want the fine tip ones. Another thing that you can use, particularly if you are using uh, USGS stuff, uh, MGRS or UTM maps, this military grid system, is you can have rulers. If you don't have the right scale in there, then it's not going to work really well. This I would use more with MGRS maps, or I would use a protractor. Protractor in the military was a huge deal for reading MGRS maps. I didn't find mine, which is really upsetting to me at this moment. I tore the office apart looking for my protractor. Holy cow, I can't believe this. But nowadays, I'm really using lat long maps, and so I don't use it as much. But in the military, you needed a map, you needed your protractor, and you needed a compass. And one more piece of kit that I don't have here is a pace cord. A pace cord allows you to be able to keep a tally of the distance you've walked, which you measure with your paces. What you need is a good pace count. Many military dude, infantry guy particularly, is going to be able to have a really spot on pace count, which means I can tell you within just a couple feet of what 100 meters is just by walking. And as you do that, if I walk 100 meters 16 times, that's a mile, 1600 meters. And basically, I'm pulling down one little bead on my pace cord for every 100 meters, and then every 1,000 gets a bead up top. So I've even built these out of 550 cord. So I can make my own pace cord. I did that back in the day, but pace cord can be really important. And I keep uh, pointing up here because I used to hang my pace cord right up here whenever I was doing lots of land navigation. So military land nav specifically, and I'm going to move a little bit more into civilian as well. You at least need a map. You should laminate that map. You should have a MGRS protractor. You should have some map markers and an eraser. You should have a compass. You should have a pace cord. And man, you should really have a GPS as well. And so all these land nav tools allow you to be able to really hone in exactly where you are at. The tools themselves don't guarantee you're not going to get lost. In fact, if you're a second lieutenant, it doesn't matter how many tools you have, you're going to be lost. Some second lieutenants who set out years ago are still lost right now. God bless them. Hope they have good NCOs and moving on. All right, after you've got maps taken care of and all those tools that are going to help with uh, preparing your maps, uh, invest in a good compass. I like this compass because it's clear. It's got good straight edges, helps me measure some distance. So that's cool. And it gives me a really good mag magnetic north. So that's uh, pretty... Uh, pretty decent. It's got a little dial that spins. This is not a high dollar one. This is not a super high dollar one either. Uh, I like the ones that are beefier, the lensatic compasses by the military with the tritium uh, already built into it. And this is just luminescent paint. So it's kind of the poor man's version. I really like this though, because it really does a really good job. I've got a little level bubble in there that allows me to make sure that I'm holding it perfectly level. So I get a really good read. And then it also has this little eyelet here. So I'm able to uh, basically pull this up right here. I can look through the eye uh, eyelet here, making sure it's perfectly level. And I can look through this window uh, far in front of me. There's a line that I can impose over terrain features or markers, and I can also see the exact degree. So I can literally look at my cameraman right now and be like, all right, Preston is at a 203 degree azimuth from my location right now. And so I can really do that. Now I can close my compass and I can walk to said terrain feature. And so being able to do that is really, really big deal. And so I like this. You can get the higher dollar ones and man, having a really good compass and these are not awesome. Uh, this one's pretty good and this one's okay-ish. I wouldn't want to do any si sincere land nav like this, but throwing in an everyday carry backpack or something in a pinch, this will be good, but you really want to be meticulous on uh, your azimuths, that you, those directions that you're shooting, because if you're walking 
many kilometers through the bush, if you're off one single degree, that translates huge over a, a, a longer distance. So make sure you get a good uh, compass. Another tool that you can invest in in a pinch is something like a watch. A lot of these watches will show altitude, which is really helpful in helping you figure out where you are on a map as these have contour lines with altitude so that you can kind of have another verification, but it also have stuff like digital compasses. This one is a Sunto Core. It probably is 100, 130 bucks last I looked, and I wasn't really impressed with it. I didn't like it. I had uh, the old Sunto cores way back in the day, and I used them, and it worked really well. I never really was able to get this compass to really uh, do a good job and hone in accurate, no matter how well I calibrated it. It just never seemed to be up to the task, and other people complained on the wristbands breaking. And so this was not a big win for me, Sunto Core. Instead, I have got this guy right here, and this is a Garmin. I forgot the model. I've been wearing it for about a month now, and I've used it a good bit, even doing a little bit of land nav out in the bush. And it's really great because this is not only a compass altimeter, but it also will keep my heart rate. It'll track my footsteps and I can get an immediate grid. This is a GPS where I can mark waypoints and navigate to waypoints. Now, the screen is super small, so it's really hard to see much. I'm not going to get the cool contour lines in any really good base map like I would, but in a pinch of just getting a grid or navigating to another grid, just straight as the crow fly, so to speak. This in a pinch can work pretty well. It also gives me weather forecasts and syncs with my phone and I had it uh, set so that phone calls and messages would go through it and immediately just started blowing up. And so that lasted about 30 seconds from when I turned it on to when I turned it off, never to use it again. But I really like this watch a lot. Again, links down below for all this stuff so that you get the right stuff. I really do dig this. I never really liked this one very much. And this one is, a, I think it's about 300 bucks, whereas this is like 120. I don't care what you get. I just happen to like what I like and moving on. The next thing to tackle is GPSs. I love GPSs. Let's start with something that is super tiny. It is a tiny little thing, and in the absence of a GPS watch like this, to be able to put it on your wrist, this can be really cool, especially for kind of tactical operations, so that you wouldn't want to navigate long distances with this, because you can't see terrain features. It's just a tiny screen, and I've just got a few buttons on the side, meaning marking and naming a waypoint is a little bit tedious, or zooming in and out and panning across. It's just not super fun. But if all you really need is just kind of a direct azimuth of like, all right, we're going generally this way, and you're kind of really doing more reading of terrain features than really just uh, finding an azimuth and bearing straight on it. This can be great for marking a grid uh, and giving a readout of your exact grid at that location. That's pretty darn cool. And whether you're hanging it off kit or wearing it on your forearm, this is really cool for tactical operations. I like it. If you're a civilian, and you're brand new to land navigation, but you don't want to break the bank, this could be kind of a good starter GPS. It doesn't have a lot of uh, uh, robust base maps, and it's a pretty tiny screen. It can get the job done for sure. It's a good investment, especially if you're on a budget. However, really, you get what you pay for when you buy the better models that have really integrated better maps, like this one right here, which I'll get into in just a moment. It is just a lot better. This is tiny. Uh, I, it lives in some of my kit in the absence of kind of my really good stuff. This will get the job done, and I've definitely navigated with this, especially if you're really relying more on your compass and maps. This is just helping you to really confirm exactly where you are on that map so you can continually get a precise map check where you're really using the map more and this is a confirmation. If I was out in the bush though and it was really I just wanted ease as a civilian to be able to navigate and I wasn't really good with all this stuff. In a pinch getting a really good GPS like this one, I really like this. I have not been using this model for very long, but man, I really like it. It came with the North America base map which was incredibly detailed and it's got all my contour lines everywhere I look. It's got all waypoints plugged in it and all kinds of hotels and gas stations, everything. This was really impressive what it came with. And I think this is a few hundred dollars. It's worth it to me. 
Uh, it's got a little carabiner. I think it should be hanging the other way so that I can flip up and look at it. But then the uh, antenna is pointing the opposite way, in which case shouldn't the antenna be... Uh, anyway, I really like this a lot. And if I was out in the bush uh, and really relying heavily on a GPS, I would want this one. This one's really good. All right, cool. Plowing right along. Let me also recommend, especially if you're not an old land nav guru, but if you are, why are you watching this video? Unless it's to share as a resource with other people. Uh, Y'all see how I fight back and forth with myself in my head. Welcome to my head. It is a bag of stray cats sometimes. Having little cheat sheets, a good idea, especially, you know, you're out in the field, you're second guessing yourself. You don't know what something means or you get your head turned around being able to just cheat and look stuff up to figure out what in the world you're doing. Go ahead and get yourself a little cheat sheet. Not necessarily this one, but a cheat sheet. I'll find something that I like and put it down below in the links for you to pack. Last thing I'd bring up is something that I haven't really used in the land navigation setting, but I can immediately see the value in. And that's something like a range finder, especially for tactical operations to be able to see exactly how far stuff is. Also, if you were having difficulty finding exactly where you are and say you couldn't get good coverage for GPS and you just couldn't use one of these things, but you really needed a good map check, I could get up and I could use key terrain features or things that I could identify from some high ground and basically just shoot lasers right here and it'll tell me how far away those things are. I put it on the map and I can basically triangulate where I am. So pretty Pretty cool for a range finder. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. But a range finder could be a cool tool. And range finders are cool anyway, especially for long range precision shooting. And so yay for that. Guys, this was an introduction to land navigation tools. I hope in the future to be able to give some instruction on land navigation because I think it's important and I think I could do a good job for you guys. If you like this video, make sure you comment, like, share, subscribe to the channel, toggle notifications to all. Thank you channel sponsor. You guys are all right and uh, stay tuned for the next uh, next video, right? Train hard, train smart. We'll see you next time.